Over the past few months, you'll have seen us building up to getting our daggerboard cases in place on the boat. Although this was an option to be provided by the factory and could have been shipped with the rest of the parts of our kit, we decided early on that we wanted to build the cases ourselves. This meant vacuum bagging each half, then applying foam core around the outside, bonding the two halves together, and finally putting an additional eight layers of glass around that. It's probably the toughest project we've tackled so far, but the skills learned and the sense of accomplishment at the end have been well worth the trouble. In the last episode, we finally bonded in the first one within the starboard owner's hull. And now that it's in place, we can begin adhering it fully to the hulls and build out all the items around which we've been previously held up on. This includes fuel tanks on each side, as well as getting the molded shower pan down in the guest hull. After eight years of the nomadic life, involving crossing oceans in a 34-foot saber, refitting an aluminum boat, and then taking that to the Arctic Circle, we're back at it again with a brand new build. This is Matt and I'm Jessica. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and join us every week as we start our newest project of building a 42-foot catamaran from the ground up. Now that the cases were in, it was time to begin bonding them to the hull side. Because there is no usable space behind the cases anymore, that area would eventually get covered. And so for the moment, we're only concentrating on the small sections where the seams currently come together, but glassing them heavily for much needed strength. The next morning, now that everything was secure below the deck, Matt used our oscillating tool to trim off excess bits of the case. Once this is done, the edges will be cleaned up and we'll be able to glass the case from the outside as well. Here's a fun new issue. We got a new batch, batch of vinyl ester in um, last week. And so this is now the second attempt to glass in these bulkheads. So we are now at roughly 12 hours. It is still in the 80s, I think, in here. And here is, well, let's put a ply over the top of it. Yeah, no, no cure at all. This happened uh, two days ago too. I worked in the night, got it all glassed in. And so of course my first assumption is, okay, it must be human error. Maybe I didn't put in enough catalyst. Switched out to a good known um, MEKP. D again, did a few tests to make sure that this was curing. Did it at multiple different percentages, so 1%, 1.25, uh, uh, 1.5, all the way up to 2. Just checking that. And then, okay, so it all looked good, no problem whatsoever. Uh, come in here at about 9 o'clock last night to do the second attempt at this. Laid down all the glass, all that kind of stuff. Jess was helping me, she was doing the mix just to make sure I wasn't screwing this up. And sure enough, we still have this problem. So what we're gonna do in the meantime is we're gonna switch back to our normal vinyl ester. We still have eh, probably about two gallons of that left and try to figure out what the heck's going on here. Not 100% sure, but yeah, take a look at this. Yeah, it's like, got hardened up a little spot right here is firmed kind of maybe just a bit over here but yeah the center section not at all it's uh i don't know exactly what's going on um which stinks is because to prep this then 
Um, I need to, of course, clean the surface off, but I also have to abrade it again. So that means I'm taking off just a little bit more um, to get the surface ready for the next time. And so each time I'm doing that, I'm taking off a bit more. And I don't love that philosophy, but, uh, and we're running out of fiberglass and they are out of stock everywhere. Uh, apparently that's been a supply issue. So a uh, little frustrated this morning. So what are you using to clean it, Jess? You got to So what Jess is doing now, I peeled off as much of the fiberglass as I could get off that was still wet. So uh, she is now going through and all the wet resin that's on there, just trying to break it down and we're using that Total Boat Eco Solvent, which is much better at doing it than like acetone or even styrene for this. Uh, just wiping it on, we're gonna let it sit for a little bit and it kind of hardens up a little bit. It cleans the surface and makes it a little bit easier to sand. I'll end up going through probably 30 or 40 sanding discs to get this because they're going to gum up almost instantly as soon as I hit it. Um, I haven't quite figured out a solution for this and hopefully I never have this problem again so don't have to figure out a solution. <laughs> Now that the Dagobah case is glassed in, I can start my next project, which is something we've really been waiting for, is to build our fuel tanks. So the diesel tank is going to be these two sections here, this kind of half circle here of the hole. They're going to be built into the floor. On this side, we'll have the tank fill and vent. And then over on this side will be the draw and where like the tank sensor is and an inspection port. But right now what I need to do is drill holes through this web. This piece is going to be acting as kind of like a baffle just to prevent uh, fluid from sloshing back and forth. So I need to drill holes to allow the fluid to actually go through. But of course the big thing is making sure that no diesel can ever really get into the core. And actually what I'm going to do is just use a thickened resin um, in that, those areas to prevent diesel from getting into the coring. And uh, then we can start the next 20 or 30 steps. So these cutouts, I tried um, drilling them out with just a hole saw and then taking the die grinder and trying to decore it. Because this is actually in place already, it was really difficult to do and try to make it even. So laminate uh, just over a one and a half inch PVC pipe, these little glass inserts, fiberglass inserts. And so they are just gonna go in there. The idea then is to put these in place with a lot of extra thickened resin, and that's gonna give that, that barrier around it. Once this is set, I'll come back and grind that down so it's nice and flush and then lay glass over the top of this. But we're using vinyl ester in this because it is a very, very chemical resistant uh, resin. This should keep everything safe. sanded they actually turned out really well and should just give great protection for this core then what I, again what I'll end up doing is putting a little piece of glass over this and cut that back out again but it will then cover up these little areas here you can kind of see this white uh, that is just basically resin thick and resin and then that glass on top and if I cover it with glass over on this side the face of it, then it's going to be just a nice strong and, and 
yeah, just uh, something we won't have to worry about at all. There's a mess in here. It is absolutely a mess in here. Because I just keep moving things from like one area to another. From your storage area to the next one yeah. to the next one. Yep, so. It's also probably three to five degrees warmer in here too. Is it really? Yeah, I can feel a definite climate change from out here to in here. Thanks. Yeah, I know, it's so gross. Thanks. <laughs> No, me too. I know. Me too. But I'm just getting like the last little bumps out so I can do Looking the Looking good. Good job, babe. Yeah. And then the coves the and we can actually paint this bad boy. Yay. Oh, wow. You're able to eliminate that bump well. Yeah. Yeah. A few passes and uh, yeah, it looks great. should be smoothed out. Good job. Thank you. I uh, can't wait to start spraying paint. Uh-huh. But tonight, I'm definitely going to need an orange crush bucket. <laughs> <laughs> So I got two areas that I'm working on at one time. One is the dagger board. We're filling in the size between the hull and uh, the dagger board case itself. And then what this will do is get glassed over to help spread that load and make sure in case we do ever strike anything, we have no worries about this moving. There will be additional webbing that goes along here in the way of like a countertop. Um, and cabinets here to help support it. So these things are gonna be absolutely rock solid, no fear of that. So that's the project going on right now. Gonna put those bongos into place. And then the other thing is in our fuel tank area, I do have the uh, little flanges that we glassed up down out of vinyl luster. And those are gonna go in each one of the spots to uh, hold the sole. So the top of the tank we can bond it to that surface, make sure we get a very good seal and it's going to be a very strong tank then. So bonding those things in place, doing the uh, daggerboard case sides uh, are the two projects for today. Once those get done, then I can go through and start filling it in and glassing. The other day I made these two little forms. Um, one of them was off of a uh, prop shaft that uh, one of the guys in the yard gave me. So it's one and a quarter inch interior diameter. Exterior is one and a half inch. This is five eighths. So this is going to be our vent line and this is gonna be our fill. So for the deck fill, the hose will come down from up in this area right by the dagger board case and come down and fill our diesel tank right here and the vent will be right next to it. So the reason why I went with this is with fiberglass for this, for vinyl ester, uh, made these, is I want to be able to secure it properly into the tank and actually be able to glass it in place. You could use a through hull, um, something you could just right straight through the hull normally, like a stainless steel one, and have that penetrate up here. Problem is, is if you need to take a hose off and it starts rotating, um, then you run into a problem of leakage. This way I'm able to glass these into place and we never really have to worry about them. So that is the plan today. Drill these holes, get these glassed into place, and then we can get the lid ready to actually bottom them down. Before we could close up the fuel tank, it had received two coats of Bar Rust 235, and now Matt was going ahead with a coat of KBS Fuel Tank Sealer. Stuff goes on so incredibly thin uh, and you only really have one coat that you're able to do it because it doesn't really stick to itself well. Uh, so I'll just keep going back over the top of it. And then the other problem I'm having is you cannot get it wet at all. And I'm sweating horribly and I keep dripping sweat in there. So I don't know exactly how I'm gonna do this. I think this is a Jessica job, not a Matt job. Oh, I'm sweating just as bad as you are today. Fan on, very important. Yes, yeah. my priority.
Mm -hmm. That was way too much, I think. Yeah, I think that's going to have a little spill out. Uh, finally bounding down the floors here after the daggerboard case has gone in. I don't even know how many months we have been waiting for this moment to come. And the fuel tank. And the fuel tank. Has been decided. Yes, that was always the question too. Do we do those? Do we do these? That's where they are. There's so many options. So my priority right now is to go around the edge and fill it in with thickened resin. That's going to act as a sealant basically and making sure that this is fuel tight. Um, and I'll come back and spread this out a little bit more along the flanges and then we'll lay that down there and hopefully it'll be good. We will pressure test this one. Um, so that will be one thing we do with this. that's a little bit different than what we're doing with the normal floors is making sure that this is exactly uh, airtight and then we'll go from there. Up after this is going to be cove all the way around, glass it so it's up onto the holes to make sure we're really sealing everything well. And I'm saving this part off so I can glass this actually all the way around. Then we'll put the 90 degree flanges again along this piece and put the aft section on. So, of course, a bunch more steps. But what we're going to do now is once this cures, I'm going to pressure test this just to make sure it's sealed well. Then I can cut out my opening for that uh, that Vetus inspection, uh, port. inspection port, which is gonna go right there. Cool. But I think we have a diesel tank. I think we do. Yay, it's something we have been waiting on for a long time. Mm -hmm. so, as you can see, we've got one section of floor over the fuel tanks fully down. Matt went in after dinner last night and glassed it to the whole sides. So now, because he also uh, bonded it around the corner in there, we can put down the big floor, which means yeah. a steady surface for us. Still waiting for steps so we like get to slide down here, but at least we're not falling in a hole. So at the moment, Matt is putting our total boat thickened resin onto the flanges, get it nice and covered, and then we'll take the floor and just this is actually the bottom that's going to get bonded. It'll get flipped around, rotated counterclockwise. And then later we get to bond it to the whole sides. Okay. But this, it needs to go under the bigger board case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alright. There you go. Now bring it down. Just let go of it. Bring it to go down. Yep, a little bit more if you can. Just slightly. Nope, that's good.
with the fuel tank prepped and the soles now down, we can start building out the furniture and cabinets in our owner's hull. Big changes are coming.